Paris in the fall, the last months of the year and the end of the millennium. The city holds many memories for me, of cafes, of music, of love, and of death. As I picked myself up, all I could hear was the ceaseless drone of traffic. Life went on around me, but the explosion was to change my life forever. Hello once again and welcome to Spotted Gaming. Today, I'm going to start a new playthrough on Broken Sword 1, which is uh, not going to be much of a surprise if you follow my channel because I've played this game, bloody hell, a long time ago. Um, but I decided to replay it because I'm trying to replay all my old games um, and delist the old, my old stuff because it's quite crap. <laughs> and he had my webcam on, and I don't like uh, I don't like how stupid my face looks on my webcam. So I'd rather record like this. So yeah, if you're not seeing my old playthrough, then you're welcome, and you never will after this goes live. So. Um, I think this was called Shadow of the Templar, if I remember correctly. Um, I haven't played this game for donkey's years. Like, well over seven? No. I'll, I'll have to check where my last video went. But um, last time I played this, I played the Director's Cut. Um, I regret playing the Director's Cut because the Director's Cut is absolute garbage. Um, there's many reasons why it's garbage. Um, one of the main reasons is um, is it's it was I guess you could call it censored quite heavily. They removed the ability for George to die in specific places. Some hilarious deaths were completely omitted because they I, I don't know I don't know why they did it. But yeah, um, a lot of the a lot of the times when George is going to die, you have to you have to react. Um, the director's court automatically put George into a place where he won't die. Um, it will make sense as we're going through. I'll, I'll most likely die. The thing is, that if you die and you're not safe for like an hour, then you just wasted an hour of your life, <laughs> and you gotta do it all over again. There's no water saves in these games, peeps. Like this is what 1990. I'm gonna say 96-ish. 
I still have this game on my PS1. It's in very good condition, as well as Broken Sword 2, The Smoking Mirror. Um, I have a story I can tell you, um, but we'll probably talk about that later. Um, funny enough, I played Smoking Mirror before I even played this game. I played the Smoking Mirror on a demo that came with the magazine a long time ago. Um, I remember it fondly because I had to keep, I had to keep going to my cousin's house because he had a walkthrough for a for the game because I couldn't get bloody through it. I was a very wee young nipper, but uh, I am much smarter. Pull past me. Anyway, this game was made in 1996. I think they've remastered. Oh, I, I, I was going to say remastered. It's not a remaster. It's more like a remake that came out in. Um, when did that come out? 2009? I want to say. It came out when the Wii U was still there. Or the Wii, I think. Is it the Wii U or the Wii? I can't believe it. It came out anyway. Um, yeah, the director's caught. It added um, it added a couple of sections with Nico in. Um, specifically at the start of the game. And they didn't really... They didn't really feel like they needed to. I love the start of this game. Absolutely love it. And then... And they've removed the complete, like... And they didn't remove it. They just added a part with Nico, and it just feels like it's not needed. Yeah, yeah. I'm pretty sure if you've um, if you played the director's cut and you're watching this, you'll understand what I mean. Um, it's it was fun originally, but yeah, they took too much out of this game in the director's cut. That makes it um, a complete a complete shit fest, and I will refuse to play the director's cut. So, in this thing version that you get. I don't know if they still have it, but my version came with the original and the director's cut. I know that the original counts as DLC on Steam. I don't know if you have to buy it or not, which will be shitty if you do. But yeah, when you start the launcher in Steam, you'll get a choice between starting the director's cut or the original. And yeah, we're playing the original. Uh, so yeah, this game is a pain in the ass to capture, by the way. Um, OBS hates it because it uses the Scum VM. Scum VM is a nightmare to even think about recording on Steam, um, on OBS. So, yeah, I'm displaying, I'm capturing my display for, on full screen. And I hope that it comes out all right. So, as we're going to begin, let's just uh, play, shall we? So, if you know what this game is, it's a classic point and click. The 90s were full of these types of games. This is arguably my favorite series well one and two is three is a bit iffy four is i don't know four is the black sheep of this family unfortunately and five was all right but yeah so yeah this this game is basically what you see um we are basically we are george but we are a mouse cursor instead and we pick where he wants to do so clicking on stuff with the cogwheel should make him interact with it the the hands obviously is picking something up and this should be a magnifying glass. There it is. If you click on this. I considered climbing the lamppost, but it wasn't going to shed any light on the affair. Oh, classic George. Classic George. But yeah. So yeah, our our objective now is to go into the into the cafe and make sure that everyone's dead. I, I mean I mean make sure anyone's alive. But yeah. How George survived the explosion is is beyond me. It should have been vaporized, surely. Or you know. Have some blood all over him or concussion. He took the explosion full face and he was saved by this top. Which is quite funny. I contemplated crawling under the umbrella. Oh, it was an umbrella. None of this had ever happened. I mean, you could try. Yeah, with the uh, with the director's cut as well, they added a lot of um hints. Yoink. The leading article referred to the visit of a Nobel Prize winner from some unpronounceable Eastern European state. That was the only news story. The rest was rumor, gossip, and sensationalism. Then I noticed the writing at the foot of the page. It read Salah ed -Din, 1345. Oh. Just put that in his pocket. Salah ed -Din. Uh, That comes into play, no worries. So, I assumed that the menu for this game was up here. Um, I think I might be thinking of Broken Sword 2. Um, this one you press escape and it brings up this um, very weird, very old school. Um, this is basically your menu. You can get text with your subtitles. You can sort your volume out. As you can see, I've turned the volume for the music down almost all the way down the bottom because it's so overpowering. Um, 
I never forgot this year. You restart, you save, and you restore. Basically, save is obviously saving the game. Restoring is loading, and restarting is probably restart the game. I don't know why you'd want that, but yeah. Very, very, very limited. So your top bar is where all your shit goes, <laughs> what you pick up. You can interact with the with, with the left click. I think if you click right. It was yeah. a Paris daily tabloid newspaper full of oh. sex, scandal, and sports results. Saucy. Yeah, right click gives him mixed George read your information about the object and left clicking it, you pick it up and you can give it to people. Which we don't want that just yet. So yeah, so here we go. So we know that the fucking crazy clan sudded off into this area, so we'll follow him. But first let's see if anyone is alive in said cafe. Man, they really did a number on that, didn't they? I examined the jagged glass remaining in the window. It was broken all right. <laughs> You never know. Like, how did George survive that explosion? It's like, it's, he must have, like, skin of iron. I mean, they didn't call him George Iron Skinned Sobart, do they? For no reason. So, waitress. And, oh, that's the guy who had the briefcase stolen. He's going to be all toasty. Toasty! I tried not to meet his stare as I searched the <laughs> dead man's pockets. Brilliant. No wallet, no papers, no credit cards. The guy's past was a blank page. I try not to meet the dead man's gaze as I'm going for his pockets. So, we can interact with the waitress. This game has a really... Because the, the game, uh, because I'm playing on full screen, it kind of upscales it. Don't worry, she's got a broken neck. There you go. Oh, she's just kidding. Is she not floating with us anymore? Oh, my head. Never again. How much vodka did I drink? <laughs> no, don't tell me. What is your name, Sherry? George Stobart, ma'am. Oh, American. She asked the question quite innocently, but I could sense her reserve. It was something which seemed to afflict all Europeans. <laughs> you look like you could use a little help. I could use a little drink. I feel sick, dizzy, and bruised. I don't even remember the party. Just relax and take it easy. You've been knocked out. You don't say. What happened? There's been an explosion. You should try not to move. Are you a doctor? I mean, he says try not to move after he moved her body himself. So, yeah, you can lie. Um, there's no reason to. It's just funny, but... Um, yeah, we're not a doctor. We're just very cool. No, but I used to play hospitals when I was a kid. <laughs> can you remember anything at all? Brilliant. No. I need a drink. Pour me a brandy. That's a very bad idea, lady. If you've had a concussion, you don't want alcohol in you, thin in your blood even more. Uh, no. You could be in shock. No alcohol. What about the old man? Is he dead? I mean, of course he's dead. Yes, he is. Oh, mon dieu. Oh. <laughs> oh, I faint. Oh. Oh, terrible. Brilliant. <laughs> Yeah, you can, you can tell it's old school. The the audio in this game is... It's so... I want to say janky, but I mean, this is like... What, 96? This is a bloody old game. The, um, I think the director's cut changed a bit of the audio, maybe. I can't really remember playing the director's cut. I... But yeah, this, this game... It brings all... Very nostalgia to me. Like, it's... I love the aesthetics of this game. You don't really, you don't really see games like this that much anymore. You know, there's a, you know there's a few indie companies out there that um that do point and click games, but nothing captures the the greatness of like an old early to late nineties point and click, or even later than that. You know, like I I was playing um Indiana Jones in the Fate of Atlantis uh, a couple of days ago, and that's. As that, that is just as good as this, if not a tan a bit better. Bloody old game as well. It's just... She didn't respond. If I wanted another cappuccino, I'd have to serve myself. <laughs> I very insensitive that sounded. So, she's unconscious. Can we give her some alcohol? Give her a shot I of brandy. A stiff drink, but I hated the taste of brandy. You and me both, brother. It tastes like shit. Give me a bit of vodka any day. So, waitress is asleep. Guess we'll just leave. 
I think um I think the double click exit is in the second game and not the first one. I don't remember needing to wait for George to walk. But as, as I said, I, I, I thought this was the start of Broken Sword 2 and then I remember that Broken Sword 2 starts very differently. <laughs> Everything sort of merges in my brain into one, but I've not played a game for a while. So, in fact, let's... Oh, no. Should we um, go and see where the clown disappeared to before we go and speak to Mr. Worker over here? Oh, yeah. the uh, Another thing the, the director's court added is... Is um, they added like portraits when the characters talk in the in the top corners, like up here on the on the left and the right, and they look so out of place. The um, it, because it's newer, they they just don't fit. I've really detested them, I and you can't remove them either, which is really annoying. Let's just have a look around. I think one of these has a cat in it. It jumps out at you. Well, must be the last one. Oh, it smelled the last like one. someone had dumped a truckload of fish in a locker room on a hot summer afternoon. It's a, a smell that I never want to smell. There it is. That's George needing a new pair of pants. There was nothing of interest. I don't like how you could interact with just random shit. <laughs> I mean, the clown obviously went into the bloody sewers. That's where he went. But unfortunately, we can't go in there. Because George doesn't have a... What's this? Is a sewer key? It's like a T-shaped, isn't it? I tried to lift like the cover bar. with my fingers, but couldn't gain any leverage. The question is, how did the clown... How did that clown open that sewer? He's got like weird, like, slender fingers. Ugh. Everyone hates clowns anyway. I took a deep breath and prepared to climb the drain pipe. That's not a good idea, George. Well, I guess the clown hadn't escaped over the rooftops. I mean, he could have. He might just be really light. He's not going to interact now. Okay. So yeah, I'm pretty sure we uh, he is obviously into the sewers, unless it's just hiding in the bin. Maybe you turn into that cat. It all makes sense. Is the changeling. Creepy clown. Yeah, they added um, at the start of um, the director's... Oh, there he is. Is that Inspector Moo? Hold it. I got there. Whoa, don't shoot. I'm innocent. I'm an American. Can't make up your mind, huh? <laughs> I demand to see the American consul. Drop your weapons and get down on the ground. Put that thing away, Sergeant Moo. I'm right, I remember I his name. Monsieur, but I cannot permit you to leave. Am I under arrest? Ah, uh, no. I would simply like to ask you some questions. En avant, to the cafe, march. Inspector Moo. That's a very recurring character. Oh, she's, she's awake now. What a mess. This bombing is an outrage, is it not? Stop that, monsieur. <laughs> Stop holding your breath at once. <laughs> Has it occurred to you that he may be dead, Mou? Oui, monsieur. But I prefer to look on the bright side. Besides, <laughs> I recall a case where the killer escaped by feigning death. Just poke him with a knife. However, in this case, the man is quite dead. Clearly, the killer knew of his presence and... How many times have I warned you about premature extrapolation? All we know is that he is dead. It seemed reasonable to assume... A great detective assumes nothing. Take Maigret, for instance. But, but he was a fictitious character, monsieur. Why, he was no more real than Poirot or Tintin. That's different, Moo. They were comedy Belgians. Anyway, it is unlikely that even you will learn much from talking to the dead. Examine the girl and take her statement, if you can. <laughs> Inspector Mo. <laughs> Brilliant. Hey, maintenant, to business. Your name, please? 
George Stobart. I'm from California. And what brings you to Paris, Monsieur Stobart? Travel. I'm touring Europe. You chose well. The city is most beautiful at this time of year, no? Uh, yeah, I guess so, apart from the bomb blasts. <laughs> Were you in the vicinity of the cafe at the time of the explosion? Yeah, I was sitting out on the sidewalk. I was lucky I wasn't killed. The inspector passed over my remark with no reaction. <laughs> did you see the deceased cold. enter the cafe? I did. Is there a little no reason to lie to this guy? <laughs> That's your an arsehole. Yes, I did. I am an Was arsehole. Was he alone? Uh, yeah. And did he say anything to you? No. He was more interested in the waitress. Damn right. Did you see anyone else in the cafe? Yeah, creepy bloody clown. Yeah, there was a guy dressed as a clown. He was carrying an accordion. An accordion? Bon, the picture is forming in my mind, and it is not a pretty one. Is the girl all right, Moo? She'll leave. She confirms the American statement. A clown with an accordion, no doubt an elaborate and eccentric disguise. Very well. Eh bien, I have heard enough. What do you mean? I am satisfied that you know nothing. You may leave. I hope this little incident does not spoil the rest of your vacation. What about my personal safety? Can't you at least give me some advice? What can I say? Stay alert and look out for suspicious characters. And don't cross the road until the little man shows green. Great advice. I honestly <laughs> believe you are in no danger, monsieur. Should you remember anything of importance, please contact me. My card. Oh. Thanks. <laughs> Shit detectives. <laughs> that is all. You may go. There's not much to go on, monsieur. On the surface, no. But what lurks inside the subconscious? If the door can only be opened. Are you serious, monsieur? I thought your interest in psychic detection was purely academic. Academic? You are about to witness a scientific breakthrough. <laughs> Guy's the worst. Hello. Oh yeah. First time you see Nico. Yeah. So Nico goes through um, quite a few changes in the pre um, in the following games. She changes the voice actress way too many times. And George is always voiced by the same guy, um, Rolf Saxon. I think his name was. I don't hold me to that. I can't bloody remember. But yeah, the original voice actress for Nico, which we'll hear in a second. Yeah, she doesn't do. I think the, I think in the director's court, I'm pretty sure the voice actress in the director's court is different. It's in oh, for the um for the the, the new sections. But I'm pretty sure that she doesn't voice Nico in any other game. Maybe maybe in number five. I could be wrong, but yeah. Let's talk to her, shall we? Excuse me, Mademoiselle. Take a picture of me, lady. Hi, my name's George Stobart. How you doing? Oh, an American by the sound of it. Yeah, that's right. On holiday in Paris. Some holiday, huh? You were here when the bomb went off? Sure was. Sat right out front of the cafe. Did you notice a middle-aged man, maybe 60, with an hat and overcoat? I couldn't believe it. She hadn't even asked how I was feeling. Yeah, he went inside just before the bomb exploded. You weren't... Related to him, were you? Oh no, nothing like that. I am Nicole Collard from La Liberté. What's that, some kind of nightclub? Uh, no, it is a newspaper. You're a reporter? I'm a freelance photojournalist. Say, you can interview me about the bombing. You know, an eyewitness account. Minutes after the outrage that shook the whole of Paris. You know, real life drama, human interest, that kind of stuff. I'll just stick to the facts, thank you. Did you see who planted the bomb? <laughs> <laughs> I know it sounds crazy, but he was dressed like a clown. Oh, God. It's him again. Yeah. 
Yeah, so I'll, I'll just add a, a little gander in. Yeah, um, Hazel Ellaby is the voice actress who does Nico. And she never was there for any other game, which is quite sad. She's probably arguably the best voice. I mean, that's nostalgia, isn't it? Um, so yeah, when you speak to someone, you obviously get these weird things. So the top stuff is the crap you've got in your pockets. And the bottom stuff is the, call them the answers or questions you can ask or tell them, the person you're talking to. So you can give her this card. Look, the inspector gave me his card. Also. You know him? Oh yes, we've met. I didn't know his first name was Augusta. It suits him, I must say. Okay. I found this newspaper outside the cafe. That is not a newspaper, it's a gossip rag. There's something written in it. Salah Eddin, 1345. It sounds like a betting tip. The name of the horse and the time of the race. What do you think? I mean, it works for me. I don't know, I'm stupid. That's what I thought. But the name of the meeting isn't given. Well, so what? I'm not the least bit interested in horse racing, are you? No, but it could be a clue to the killer's next move. Do you think his next victim will be the jockey? Or the horse? She looked at me with a playful twinkle in her eye. Okay, it's a long shot. <laughs> She's taking a piss out of him. Brilliant. Rosso didn't blink when I told him about the clown. It's as if he already knew. That is typical of a cold fish like Rosso. I've seen cheeseburgers with more spunk. I hope not. That's disgusting, and I refuse to eat it. Anyway, moving on. You speak very good English for a French girl. Thanks. You speak very good English from America. Wow. Who's the guy you were supposed to meet? His name was Planter. I didn't know him, but he called me last night. He said he had a story which would interest me. He asked me to meet him at the cafe. I guess I'll never know what he wanted to tell me. Well, not unless you have Rosso's gift for psychic interrogation. How did Plantar get your name? Through the newspaper La Liberté. I'd written an article linking two unsolved murders. One in Italy, the other in Japan. The cases were remarkably similar. A wealthy victim, no apparent motive, and a costumed killer. Planta said he could supply me with more information. Have you met the clown before? It's a long story. I have plenty of time. I don't. <laughs> wow, that's a cold shoulder she's got there. Why won't you tell me about this clown? Why do you want to get involved? Because he almost killed me. Isn't that reason enough? I guess so. Listen, I'll give you my phone number. Hello? You nice. You help me with my story and I'll let you in on what I know. And let's get one thing straight right now. This is strictly business. Okay. Yes. It's a deal. <laughs> I have to go develop these pictures. A bientôt, monsieur. Fine. I'll uh, see you soon. Yeah, see you soon, darling. That's what he's thinking, isn't he? George is going to be like, yeah. Got hit by a bomb and got a number for him from a chick. Uh, should I speak to Inspector Moo? <laughs> He's got such a great tash. Me, Sergeant. You are the Inspector. Oh, it's Sergeant Moo. Oh, uh oh. Did you find the victim's briefcase yet? No, sir. The Inspector gave me specific instructions to guard this door. Until he countermands these orders or backup arrives, here I stay. Huh. I was one of the last people to see the victim alive, Sergeant. Does that worry you? Yes, it does. I feel I kind of... I owe it to him to find his killer. That is best left to the authorities, monsieur. Did he speak to you? Tell you anything? No. He just grinned and nodded. Don't let it trouble you, monsieur. Go on and try to forget. Okay, I don't want to talk to him anymore. See you later, Sergeant. Bye, Moo. Yeah, so we need to talk to the worker dude. So our objective is to follow the clown. 
the clown is obviously went into into the sewer and I think we need something in his toolbox and obviously he's not gonna let us in his toolbox because he looks like a rouchy old bastard hi can you spare a few minutes I thought you'd been arrested <laughs> no it was a misunderstanding <laughs> when he pulled that gun gah, I thought that was it those automatics by quite a bunch you know he made a mistake he thought I was a terrorist you a terrorist ha he was only doing his duty I guess I mean moves moo yes would you like to read my newspaper I haven't got time to read that can't you see I'm busy you could read it on your lunch break ten minutes is all I get and if my boss had his way I wouldn't get that he'd have me on a drip so I didn't have to stop to eat oh take the newspaper and quit complaining <laughs> ten minute break what a crap man that's bah! slavery look at this damn bleeding out liberals ja! save the dolphins catch them and eat them I say all that fuss over a bunch of fish now nah, that's more like it look at the size of those like champagne bottle corks no ah what <laughs> this Saladin running in the Prix de l'Arc de Triomphe it's a racehorse a horse a legend Bucephalus reborn mon ami like a streak of lightning she is Do me a favor, won't you? Keep an eye on my hole. I'm off to put some money on that nag. Oh, that was easy. I thought I had to. I know I had to give him the newspaper, but I didn't think he would just wander off. Bye. Oh, huh. sweet. Let's roll. Let's let's fuck around in this shit. You got in there. I found just what I wanted. Hell yeah. A tool for lifting manhole covers. It's almost like I've played this game before. Yeah, here it is. It looked kind of like a cross, doesn't it? The card read, Augustin Rosso, and gave an address to the south of the Montparnasse Cemetery. It's an odd place to put a cop station in a cemetery. It was a metal rod with a handle at one end and a short cross piece at the other. So, we're going to completely ignore what this guy wanted and just sod off now. Sorry, dude. I don't get... If you paid me... Yeah, you know, I would have stayed to look after his hole, but he didn't. So screw him. Into the sewers, which is probably not the best place you want to go, especially in Paris. I was assuming this game had a double tap to exit. It's going to be quite annoying just to watch George slowly walk to a to an exit. So if we use this on this panel cover. As if he put that in his pocket. Yeah, George Stover, he has like an unlimited inventory space. I lifted the cover to reveal what smelt like the entrance to a sewer. I mean, it is an entrance to the sewer. <laughs> ah, George. 